there. Taking over for Danny O'Dwyer on our live stage show here at Comic-Con 2013. And as you know, it's time for Halo Spartan Assault. Joining me from 343 Industries, I've got Dan and Frank. Gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Hey, man. How's it going? It's going well. Uh, this. Dan, we last sat on a stage together at E3. That's right. Uh, but something big has changed since <laughs> E3 and now for Halo Spartan Assault. Yeah, biggest change is we're live. The right? game is so out. The game went live yesterday. Congratulations to both of you. Oh, uh, yeah, thanks. No, it was uh, a lot of fun, a lot of work. Um, but it's out there now. We're getting some great feedback, um, some great reviews. People are really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And it's really good to just finally have it out there. Yeah. Just have it going? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Uh, so you guys are here. We've got the game set up in the back. We're going to jump into some gameplay any moment now. Uh, but Frank, for you know, as a, you know, you guys both have worked on Halos upon Halos. Uh, Spartan Assault is a bit of a different flavor for the Halo universe, but what, what, what's sort of the through line that, that makes this such a, such a Halo, a, a true Halo experience? So, the, I mean, the, the main through line, like any Halo game, is going to be the story. So it's definitely a story of uh, kind of a Spartan 4 origin story in some senses, and you're going to get a little insight into the, the backstory of the Spartan 4 program as it relates to Halo 4. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, think, I think Dan can properly speak to the fact that we wanted to make uh, an experience that was suitable for the devices it was going to be on. We wanted to make something that was going to work on mobile platforms and be absolutely built for those platforms from the ground up. So those platforms being Windows Phone, Windows Surface, tablet, anything that's running Windows 8, yes. right? Yeah. yeah, so PC, phone, tablet, all of it. And as Frank was saying, the goal was really to create a fun Halo experience first, mm -hmm. rather than worrying about how do we port our console experience over. Sure. We wanted to make, you know, realizing we're using different real estate on phone, tablet, and all of that stuff, creating something unique that still felt like Halo. So you've still got the sandbox, you're still picking up weapons and vehicles, but it's a different way to play. And the weapons and vehicles, uh, you know, you got some classics in there. There was a trailer you guys launched a little while ago, and that. The, the clatter of those dual SMGs from Halo 2 just like transported me back into the past. I think I mentioned this to you even I at E3. Yeah, exactly. uh, but it's just, you know, it speaks to sort of the, the strength of the, the audiovisual identity of Halo. So, in terms of, you know, that shift to a, a whole different perspective, you know, the characters are much smaller, stuff, you know, a bigger sort of field of view. Like, how, how was it preserving that, that art style, that very Halo look, while sort of making it sparkle from a different point of view? I mean, I think that the, the, game, the games have always held up uh, pretty well when you sort of detach the camera and look at things from a distance. Mm -hmm. But I think you said it yourself, there's a lot of sort of material concepts, sounds and sights in the Halo universe that people have spent more than 10 years with at this point. And they're as familiar to some of our players as that, you know, when you hear the sound of a lightsaber being, you know, activated, yeah. you get it. You just yeah. know it's Star Wars and you're there. And I think people feel the same way about the sounds of the Warhog and the sounds of some of the weapons. Mm -hmm. And we've had to be careful in, in past Q&As about will dual wielding ever be coming back when yeah. we, we answer that question. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, Frank's bang on. Uh, you know, obviously we, we started with a lot of the same audio sounds mm -hmm. and things like that because, you know, we wanted the SMG to sound like an SMG. Sure. We wanted the battle rifle to sound like a battle rifle. We wanted the so, needler to... Exactly, you know, and to behave uh, the same way that people know about, you know, do a bit of homing. So we used all of that as a basis. And, you know, you do some tweaking because, again, you're working with different kinds of speakers and things like that. Mm -hmm. But that's just one great way to make people know they're still based in the Halo universe. Probably the best feedback, you know, I, I take away from what we're getting with Spartan Assault is this still feels like Halo. And for us, that's like, okay, that was exactly the goal. That's what we want yeah. people to say. We don't want you to feel like you're playing a different game in a completely different yeah. universe. Mm -hmm. And you see players, like, they'll, they'll take control of their Spartan, they'll start running, and they just go do, they go pick up weapons, they go, like, board vehicles, they go get on turrets, and they just know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, it just really works, and it feels like Halo. So. So in terms of actually doing that stuff, you know, you've got your you've got your device, you got your touch surface out. Sort of what give, give us a, a quick overview of what what the actual controls are like for moving around as a Spartan Four. So yeah, we wanted to go for you know a big challenge was how do you take Halo that you know people have been used to playing like this on a controller and switch it for a touch interface. So what we ended up with was like a top-down twin stick shooter paradigm. So okay. think of like a Smash TV or a Robotron or something like that. That was kind of like an inspiration for us. Uh -huh. Uh, so those two controllers are your primary movement, so you're moving with your left hand and you're aiming and shooting with your right. And uh, along the side of your screen, we've got things like use your Spartan ability, shoot grenades, interact with things in your environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, we probably went through about a dozen different control schemes till we got to this one. Just trying uh, to get it just right, intuitive. Exactly, but, you know. and dealing with the glide problem, right, which I think we might have spoken about at E3. Normally, you know, when you're playing games on a phone or a tablet, 
your hands tend to glide oh, yeah. when you're playing. So we developed an adaptive system that actually glides with you. So it's oh, actually a lot of good. fun. Yeah, you can't count on the player's thumbs being in the same place at all times. Exactly. Yeah. So as your hands do start to drift, your base moves with you. So you're not constantly like resetting yourself, which just works great. And the game contextualizes what you're doing. And it sort of knows what you're trying to shoot or get into and so on. And uh, there, there is mouse control, of course, for the Windows 8 platform. And there, we're going to release software that will let you use Xbox 360 controller on a, a suitable PC. But really, it's built from the ground up to be a, a really kind of fun, portable experience. But there's a lot in there for every every type of player. Yeah. No matter how thumb challenged they are. <laughs> now, you, you made an interesting mention of you know you, helping sort of building stuff into between the controls and the actual gameplay experience that kind of helps uh, the player. And you know, on consoles, as compared to PC, you know, you've got the thumbsticks are not quite as sharp as the mouse, so they yeah. build in a little bit of aim assist. You know, it's that is that is that that kind of stuff. You yeah. build in a little bit. Of those are those are kind of simpler problems for us to solve because there's you know 40 years of doing mouse controls and yeah. and 10 to 20 years of doing analog stick controls. So those aren't the big the big problems. I think the thing that we're really proud of. Uh, as a team and proud of the, the the guys over at Vanguard is solving for that that control scheme input with a with a non-tactile you know smooth surface where you're not getting any real sort of visceral feedback from the screen and it just feels right and we the best proof of that is people pick it up and they know what they're doing and they're doing it right and I, I think that's the best proof point that you can have you guys have. been showing it off here at the at the convention center how's no. it how's the reception been it's been great yeah we've got it going at a showcase over at the Hyatt uh, uh -huh. another opportunity for people to get their hands on it it's great, right? You know, the, the, the biggest thing I take away when people talk about the controls is, you know, people say, it took me about two minutes and I was able to go. And then boom, you're And in that's there. exactly what we wanted, like a really quick ramp so people can just grab it and start playing Halo. The thing that blows my mind is, is you know, I play a lot of mobile games and they tend to be simplistic uh, and they tend not to go for ambition because the form factor. Mm -hmm. uh, but seeing people play the Surface version, it makes sense. It looks beautiful. It's a fairly powerful PC. But the phone version blows my mind. You're looking through the same window, uh, the uh -huh. same fidelity of graphics, and it just looks incredible. So. Wow. Yeah, part of the goal was for it to be a showcase piece, right? You know, I say all the time, people think of mobile games, you think of limitations, right? You think yep. of what you can't do. Uh -huh. And yeah, to Frank's point, the game looks just as gorgeous on your phone as it does on your tablet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's really, really been massive for us. And now we've been talking a lot about sort of the player's interaction with the, the Surface, the controls, the single player experience. But in some of the clips we've been seeing, there's cooperative, there's cooperative, there's multiplayer experiences as well in Spartan, in, uh, Spartan Assault. Yeah, so for the launch time frame, actually, we wanted to focus just on nailing that single player campaign. Oh, okay. So yeah, it is all about single player uh, for, Currently. For, this, for this time frame. Okay. And, uh, you know, because obviously controls, we wanted to make sure we nail, we wanted to make sure we were able to tell a good story, do the connection points back into Halo 4, tell a great story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I say all the time, uh, launch is but the beginning, right? <laughs> so we've got a long commitment to this. We've got some new content that's already on the books that we're planning. Frank mentioned the controller support that's coming. Yep. We've got some other stuff coming as well. Nice. Uh, the other thing that's really fun about mobile platforms is it's really fun, quick, and easy for us to put up new content, put on new things, and respond to feedback we're getting from people. Yeah, it's a different pipeline for you guys as developers exactly. putting that game into players' hands. Yeah, and speaking of multiple protagonists, like you do have your AI uh, buddies helping you. That must be and what seeing saw, them yeah. from that, that perspective gives you, you know, when I'm playing FPS games with AI, like, I kind of ignore them and just go do my yeah, own thing. Yeah, they're outside the peripheral but, vision, maybe. Yeah, but these know. guys are right there in front of you, and you can sort of choose your, pick your battles literally based on what your friend, your friends, your friendly AI is doing to help you. Yeah. So it, it does change the, your sort of moment-to-moment -moment tactics, but definitely your overall strategy. Yeah, because you got a you got a, a bird's eye view. You can get take exactly. in the whole tactical situation exactly. at one time without you know whipping your head around trying yeah. to get get the, get a lay of the land. All right, guys. Well, Halo Spartan Assault is out now on for Windows 8, so PC, Windows Phone, Windows Surface. Tablet, and Surface Tablet. Yep. yep, that's out now. And it's out now, so you guys can like totally <laughs> go download go and play right it yeah. af after you watch our awesome live broadcast <laughs> all afternoon, of course. Uh, Dan, Frank, thank you so much for coming by and talking thank Halo you. Spartan Assault. It's always a pleasure. Thanks, Thanks. a lot. All right, uh, folks, we're going to head out to the show floor for some check-ins with Homer Rabara, and then we're back for more live demos here from GameSpot's base station at Comic-Con 2013.